Jerry Moore, Touch Response, and Kayla. Kayla hadn't been around in a <laughs> while, and uh, we're going to do another video about her uh, pretty soon, uh, uh, about her uh, uh, recent uh, uh, keto experiment that's going on, so we'll talk about that later. But I want to talk about the Modern Minuteman uh, Team Medic or me Medical Panel for the Team. And um, so... Couple things. This this bag was made by uh, So Tech, my friend Jim Craig and the, the guys out there, wonderful folks, made in America stuff. Um, this big bag uh, is awesome. There'll be links underneath. And I just got this from Jim at the last shot show, maybe the last show shot show that will ever happen. Uh, this bag, Molly on the back, and it'll attach to a bag or a pack or whatever. And this thing unzips into this big bag and you might be thinking what what's the big deal about this opening up in this big bag well if an operator gets shot especially overseas you're not going to leave his helmet and his nods and his body armor you're not going to leave all that behind so this will fit i know it doesn't look like it but this will fit an operator's kit They'll, it'll all go in there helmet helmet and everything and so that's a pretty neat thing to have so you're not like where's this shit and you know all that stuff so from a uh, operational security standpoint that's fantastic so this big ass trauma bag um, uh, it is it is something else so broadly speaking Esotech again American made California is still technically in America but American made and uh, um, and most of the stuff that we got inside of this bag was either uh, from Amazon, and you can look at my Amazon link below for the Modern Minute Man. I'll have the links in the medical stuff. Uh, but a lot of it that we couldn't get from there, the, the better gear, was from thetacticalmedic.com. Thetacticalmedic.com. Uh, friends and alumni out there. So, uh, Kayla is, uh, tell them your uh, level, of, level of education as a, a medical professional. Okay, so I've been a uh, part of the task response medical stuff since the beginning. The beginning. Um, was doing that for uh, around 15 years now, and then after I had kids and decided I could deal with bodily fluids, um, <laughs> I decided to become a nurse. So I went to LPN school, and I've been nursing since the beginning of 2018, uh, almost two years in corrections, and now I do home health nursing. So every job that I've had as a nurse, there's not a doctor around. So we kind of get to to deal with all of it and then just call and report back and see what we're supposed to do next. So. And uh, one of the proudest days for me as a father was when <laughs> I got to read a complaint filed on Nurse Kayla that said, Nurse Kayla said she was going to punch me in my mouth. <laughs> and I'm like, that's, that's my girl. So uh, we'll go to the overhead camera. We'll open this thing up and uh, kind of show you what's going on. Okay, so here's the bag and it unfolds to a pretty, pretty big size and so the first thing you're going to see is this big thing this is a litter that also is a thermal guard it's like a insulated sleeping bag almost and shock is a big killer of people on the battlefield and so this thing is rolled up in the middle it's a heavy duty litter but it also has that uh thermal uh th thermal capability so that's a, that's a big deal no matter what no matter what time of year it is uh that's that's a good thing all right kayla uh you pack this thing mm -hmm. so kind of tell them uh if we need to move the bag uh, we'll just start at the top and so it's really difficult not to get big purse syndrome with these things and you <laughs> want to fill it up. Uh, but keep in mind that when you're putting things in, it's stuff that you got to get to quickly. So in bleeding, which is the first thing that's going to kill you, we just have gloves and four tourniquets. Two of the, these are the uh, recon. I, I don't know. I think. Yeah, recon. Two, recon yeah, medical, sorry. Uh, two windless tourniquets. And then two of the RAS tourniquets. Uh, I love the RAS tourniquets because I have kids, and they're small enough to where they're going to work on children as well, while the windlass will bottom out. So there's a lot of people that don't like the RAS tourniquet, and I keep asking them to come here and let me put a tourniquet on them and tell me if it works or not. They won't show up. Please, like, conti please continue. <laughs> uh, the next one is assessment. 
What is assessment? Assessment is where you're gonna get all of their vital signs and what you're gonna use to make sure that they're staying healthy throughout the, the whole ordeal. One thing about the tourniquets, make sure that you open them. You've gotta have those fast. Every pocket on this is gonna have gloves and extra batteries in the pockets that need them. And all these electronic items, <clears throat> we take the alkalins out and put lithium batteries in because lithium batteries do not leak and won't ru ruin your stuff. And they last, they, lithium batteries still have 70% of their power at 10 years. Headlamp so that you can see what's going on. The mask. These in case they have corona. Yeah. <laughs> These are only used to block out like blood getting in your mouth and things like that. Uh, it does not protect against tiny little particles. It, it's go just on, go big on. stuff. They got enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> These are just cards to where if you have multiple people, you can mark what's going on with each patient. Kind of leave them that way if you have to hand off care. It's Tri just triage easier. Triage cards. Uh, glasses to make sure that bodily fluids don't get in your eyes. A pulse ox so that you can monitor. So, what's the whole name? Sorry, a pulse oximeter so that you can monitor their heart rate and their oxygen saturation. Um, the oxygen saturation is a really good indication of whether or not good air is being moved in and out of their lungs. There's a lot of jargon with this stuff. That's why I'm here to make sure my daughter talks. <laughs> well, like when people talk about guns to her, she's like, I don't know. My dad just tells me oh. what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> A uh, pin light so that you can uh, look at pupils and it can also be used as a flashlight to get in there and look at other parts of the bodies. Uh, when you look at their pupils, you're paying attention to their mental status and whether or not they have brain issues. A thermometer, uh, because like we mentioned earlier, shock is a big killer and you want to make sure that their core body temperature stays uh, in the 90s minimum. But normal is between 96 and 100. And then a stethoscope so that you can listen to their heart rate, lung sounds, make sure that all all portions of their lungs are feeling filling up with air. And then you can also listen for uh, like take their blood pressure, things like that. And then <laughs> you got <yeah>. more stuff. <laughs> uh, blood pressure cuff so that you can monitor that. Um, their blood pressure is a good indication of. Uh, circulation in their body and whether like it'll start going down as they start losing more blood volume uh I, I, she can't help but to teach you a medical class but we're not teaching a medical class okay. that would take <laughs> this would be five hours long <laughs> just tell them what's in each pocket okay uh the glucometer it measures their blood sugar and then some trauma shears to get them exposed enough to where we can see what's going on with them and so we got color coded um, so we can say get stuff out of the blue you know the blue yeah. bag the red bag whatever the case may be if you're dealing with multiple people that might not know what you're talking about colors work really well and people can't read well under stress believe it or not and so having the ability to say red the, the type with the red tab or the blue tab or whatever that's, that's going to be a big help in an emergency <laughs> all right. So airway, airway is a big deal. You gotta you gotta have air coming in and all that stuff coming in and out. Just all right. We're all in here. So this is manual suction. The cameras yep. there. <laughs> so this is manual suction. You can you can well, while you're putting okay. stuff away, you can be talking about what you would use that for. I'm just uh, saying don't don't stop packing to right. keep teaching. Okay. Manual suction would be used to get blood and stuff out of their airway. Chest seals, these are the halo seals, so they come two in a pack. Uh, one for the entrance wound and one for the exit wound. Same, same with the hyphens, they come yeah. in a two pack. Hyphen seals. These are, uh, goo yeah. These are airways that go in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and or, oral pharyngeal airways. Yeah, well, there's this like, yeah. Yeah. Um, they are different sizes because uh, people from we were have from infants up to adults. We just have the adult sizes in here because we have a separate pediatric bag. Yes. Now we got go to the pediatric bag. 
<laughs> uh, some syringes. Uh, these can work on the end of your needles to help pull out air and then also for suction. Those are the needles for chest decompressions. And then the nasopharyngeal airways or NPAs. Uh, we have them in adult sizes. When you pack your own bag, try to pack them to where uh, you avoid folding the tube because that can make it more difficult to get in. And then these are just some uh, occlusive gauze to where you can cover up holes and no air will leak through. Now, you might be thinking, I don't know how to use all that stuff. It that doesn't mean you shouldn't have it. Uh, there might be somebody Some come along that would, would know how to use it, so uh, it's good to have this gear, even if you don't know how to use it yourself. For wound management, this is after you get all of the big bleeding stopped. <laughs> Again, gloves in every compartment. Got some acrylic rolled gauze. Some more rolled gauze, uh, abdominal pads just to cover up wounds, some little antimicrobial uh, dressings. They're non-adherent so they won't stick to stuff if somebody has burns, things like that. The quick clot combat gauze, these are impregnated with the quick clotting agent and will help stop the bleeding faster. The sponge is just kind of like a, a bag full of it. Mm -hmm. Um, work, they work really well in your your crevices. Places where a turner can't, can't fix it in, in your trunk, uh, so to speak, uh, in your pelvic girdle, places like that is where you use hemostatic agents. Um, some more gauze, bandages, some H bandages. These things are top notch for a compression bandage. They work incredibly well. Just to help secure things over the top, like an extra big band-aid. And then uh, some 4 by 4 gauze just in case the wound is smaller and you pack it, clean it up, do things with that. And there are about 200 of those in that bag. Next pocket is IV administration. gloves in every bag or every pouch. We've got a thousand milliliters of saline, just normal saline, because when people are losing blood, um, you've got to have something pumping through them. Blood is the most, like the best option, but that's your most viable out on the field. Got some flushes, needles of all sizes, and they're the IV needles, so they have the catheter that you can insert and slide in. Uh, just because some people are harder sticks, easier sticks, kids, and then what you're going to do with it if you're going to put fluids or other stuff. Uh, an IV start kit. Um, it has the little IV tourniquet in there. The uh, sponges, tegaderm, like all the stuff that you would need to actually get the IV started and going besides the needles. Some alcohol pads. The tegaderm to go over the top of the IV and hold it in place. Tape will work, but... Oh, it's just easier to have stuff that is specifically built for it. The extension set and tubing. Um, these just make it longer. This right here is the administration set. So it has the actual thing that you would squeeze to start uh, putting the fluid into somebody. You don't have to have a machine. Gravity works. The higher up it goes, the faster it's going to flow in. The lower, the slower. Another like administration set and then uh, 20 gauge 18 gauge those are usually the most common for IVs uh, if somebody's a trauma victim and they're going to a hospital they're gonna have like the bigger uh, 14 16 gauges things like that just you, so got, they can... you guys that know about shotguns but you don't keep going you know about shotguns but you don't know about gauges it works the same that the smaller the number of needles the bigger the hole just like in a in your home defense shotgun our next pocket is our ortho pocket. Sprains and sprungs and yep. pulls and 
So we've just got some tape. Go ahead and open that up. Just some uh, medical tape. Uh, the fabric and the silk tapes work better than the regular kind just because they don't uh, come off as easy. Triangular bandage so that you can use it as a sling. More medical tape because duct tape can fix just about anything. <laughs> Uh, an emergency bandage that can help work to splint stuff if you don't have an actual splint. Some Coban in the four inch and the two inch just help secure things. Some ace wrap for like ankle sprains. And then we have casting tape uh, just in case somebody has a break. And you can hold that in place if it's gonna be a while before you get to where you're going. In our miscellaneous pocket, again, we have... Don't take that off. Okay. It'll stick to everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just everything else. And yeah. there should be a roll of Gorilla Tape in your in your bag yes, or two. Yes, for sure. Um, like, it can be used for so many things uh, in a medical, you know, in a, in a medical field. I mean, it's help building a stretcher out of trees or something like that. You can Gorilla Tape that bitch together. I mean, like... You can, you can make stuff work. So, mouth swabs to keep the person's mouth moist. Uh, you might not be able to give them actual water, but that keeps them, that helps them stay hydrated because you can push that onto their tongue and give them just enough to where they're not miserable while you're dealing with them. Eye swabs, they look like little arrows to get things out of your eye. Dental equipment. This was uh, per Sherman House's recommendation. I don't know how to use these, but somebody <laughs> might. <laughs> uh, emergency braces kit. We needed that before. Yeah. The students have braces come loose. <laughs> um, this is the staple remover. So if you've got to staple somebody's head, it's not that difficult to staple somebody we together. Do in here? Yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> 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 Uh, suture removers. We also have suture kits in there. So to take the stitches out. Uh, oh, that's, <laughs> that's her phone, not yep. yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, these scissors just help protect the person. You can use actual ones. These are just designed for removing sutures. If somebody has a nosebleed, you can pack those in there. Or if they have dental work done. An otoscope to check out their ears. See down in there. Wouldn't that be an assessment? Wouldn't otoscope? Um, yeah, but they don't all fit in there. So, okay, all yeah. right, all right. Yep. And uh, the miscellaneous is kind of where the stuff that's not super important gotcha. can go. So their ears, it's kind of a later thing. You just, uh, gotcha. it doesn't matter if they're deaf in the moment, yeah, but gotcha. later on you want to yeah, start checking right. that stuff out. Yeah, that's not battlefield shit. Right. A dry sterile burn dressing, just because it won't fit in the other stuff. So this is kind of our go-to pocket for this, that stuff couple of band-aids some eye wash uh, just to get stuff out of their eyes smoke pepper spray <laughs> um, normally wouldn't put medicine in a trauma bag but if somebody's having a heart attack or something one of the, uh, they need to chew up some aspirin so we put these in there and then of course your duct tape uh, people don't appreciate aspirin but if it was invented today you'd have to have a prescription to get it oh yeah <laughs> that's the truth people people don't don't, don't buy it but yeah. it is the surgical pouch. Okay. So, huge bottle of hydrogen peroxide. Not for your ears. No. And rubbing alcohol. Like for down and dirty, you can clean stuff up with that. Alcohol pads. The benzoin compound. Um, it it just helps get stuff prepped and as sterile as possible as you can be outside of a hospital. Um, more regular gloves. And then we have a pair of uh, these sterile gloves. 
Yeah, people, this, people think all the ones that get out of that box are sterile. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Regular gloves are gross. Um, <laughs> the sterile gloves, uh, there's a procedure and everything to put them on. It's kind of fancy. Suture kits. The dual swap iodine sticks, just again, to kind of help get some of the gunk gone. Another multi-trauma dressing to put over the area that you're working with. Set your tools on, whatever you need. A stapler. You're showing it to this camera. Yeah. You got <laughs> you went like this. Oh, stapler. <laughs> <laughs> and then a field surgical kit. It has scalpels and things to where you could perform surgery outside of a hospital if necessary. Emergency only kind of stuff. Yeah. Again, somebody might know how to use this. <laughs> and then for our general purpose bag, this also has stuff that wouldn't fit in other spots and can kind of be used for everything. Got the Blizzard Survival Blanket. Again, shock is huge, so keeping them warm. Uh, catheter if somebody has traumatic injuries to that general region and they're not peeing on their own you've got to put a catheter in to keep their bladder from exploding like you got to think about those things sharps container and emergency crike kit if somebody has airway issues some of the small emergency blankets and a couple of splints for bone Sam's injury. Yeah, yeah, Sam's splints. And more gloves. All right, we'll, we'll go ahead and finish up right here. Okay. No, no, um, so we appreciate you guys. If you have questions, post them below the video and we'll try to answer them the best we can. We're gonna do some more medical videos with some more of our kits. Pediatric kit, she left the cat out of the bag on that one. <laughs> uh, no, but it's good stuff. Uh, six grandkids, I worry about that stuff. So, um, uh, so, Again, you, you might not know how to use this stuff, but there's probably somebody around that can. And so it's always good to have medical gear around, especially if the boogaloo happens. You want to you make sure that you take care of the people you need to take care of. And bullets go both ways. If you don't have medical training, I'd encourage you to come take our immediate action medical class. If you have had some medical training, but you want some combat medical training, I encourage you to take our uh, high-risk civilian contractor medical class. What, what else do you want to close up with? I... Just get medical training. Yep. Like, at least know how to stop a bleed and to put it in an airway. Like, you don't want somebody you care about to die because you failed to prepare. So, thanks again, Jim Craig out of Esotech for making such a good, great piece of gear. Really appreciate that. And also, I'd like to thank my friend Sean at thetacticalmedic.com for helping me get all this great gear and put this together for my friends and family. Hopefully, we never need it. It's kind of like insurance. You buy medical gear and hope you never use it. <laughs> James Yeager and Kayla for Tactical Response reminding you that your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends. That's our phone, not yours. <laughs>